Hello everyone, Reaper here, coming to you with my New York City Comic Con haul. This, the comic, um, the New York City one at least, was my first major Comic Con. I've been to smaller conventions over the years, but I never went to anything uh, that big. Surprisingly, since I've been a collector for over 20 years, but I never uh, went to, I never did the New York City one. Um, so I was there yesterday, uh, Thursday. And that was supposed to be the light crowd, but man, if that was the, what I went through yesterday, if that was supposed to be the light crowd, I hate to see what the heavy crowd of the weekend is going to be like, because it was packed. But it was a really cool experience. I got quite a few books, which is the basis of this video, but I was uh, walking around. I got a chance to take a couple of videos and snapshots of Action Comics number one and Detective Comics number 27. On sale for like I think, uh, well at least Action Comics number one, the 9.0 that I saw was on sale for about three million. So if anyone's interested, that's where you'll find it. But um, yeah, it was a really good time. So let me get to my video and showcase some of the really neat books I was able to pick up. So we're starting off with this one. Origin number one. This was the only one out of the Wolverine origin set that I was missing. Um, a couple months ago, I went to a small-time convention. A guy wanted 20 bucks for it. I practically told him to go fuck himself. I wasn't going to spend $20 on this book. Uh, the first um, uh, vendor I, went, I saw, I visited yesterday at the Comic-Con, had this book in his long, the long boxes. Uh, he had a lot of good books in those long boxes, and they were all 50% off. He was charging $15 for it, 50% off. I spent, what is that, uh, seven, $7.50? $7 <laughs> My math is usually bad. Uh, but yeah, so I paid $7.50 for it. Well, can't beat it, and it completed my origin set. First printing. Detective Comics, 683, the first appearance of the ventriloquist and Scarface. Um... I think I actually got this. I got this for two dollars, I think, or or a dollar or something. And I believe I got it out of the from the same vendor, same dealer that I got uh, Origins number one at. So yeah, this was a book I was trying to. I'm trying to build up my Batman collection, and uh, this was a book I needed. There was a few. There's a few other books I still want to get, but this was one on the list. I made a list when I went there uh, yesterday, and this was on that list, and I was glad to uh, been able to get it. Batman 367. Okay, there's a bit of a story with this one, and uh, I, I'm almost embarrassed to talk about it. Um, I have really, really poor vision, and I saw this up on the wall, and for whatever reason, I don't know why, I thought that this was actually Batman 357, you know, the first appearance of Jason Todd, and I purchased this thinking that it was 357. However, I'm sorry for the images blurring. I don't know why it's doing that. But maybe it's because of all the, the green, it's screwing it up. But anyway, when I got back home and I started looking at my books, I'm like, oh, wow, I got this key issue, I got that key issue. Then I'm looking at this, and it says 367. I was like, oh, holy shit. Boy, did I screw up. I paid 30 bucks for it. I mean, eh, 30 bucks is still 30 bucks, but it's not like I paid 80 or or $100 for it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got Jason Todd for $100. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's the story I have with this one. I don't know the significance. This was up on the wall. I don't know why he had this up on the wall. Um, I don't know the significance of this. I know it's a poison ivy issue, as you can tell from the name over here. And Batman looks like he's stuck in a bush. But yeah, I don't know the significance of it. But yeah, that's, that's my story with this one. So I was a little pissed off. But... Um, so Jason Todd, Batman 357 is now back on my hit list. Suicide Squad number 23, the first appearance of Barbara uh, first appearance of Barbara Gordon as Oracle. I got this for a really good price. I saw this. I said, "Oh, you know, I saw it actually a couple places." And I was like, "Well, it wasn't on my list." And I was like, eh, "I don't know." So, I finally said, "Well, how much is it? It was a good price." I Went and got it, and boom, took care of another uh, key uh, key appearance. 
I also, you know, as you know from the my my video, my two videos ago, comic book haul video two, I was actually able to get the first appearance of uh, Barbara Gordon in uh, Detective Three Five Nine. So it makes it made sense for me to get her as Oracle. Good book. Tales of the Teen. T Sorry for the glare here. Uh, Tales of the Teen Titans number forty four. This is a real. This is the first appearance of Dick Grayson as Nightwing. Really good copy, except there's a crease. As you could probably see it right there, there's a crease here. Once again, I didn't notice it until afterwards. I mean, it's still good. I think it's at least a seven. The rest of the book is fine. The centerfold, the edges, the spine, beautiful. But that part, you know, sort of like ticked me off. I didn't pay that much for it, but eh. Not bad, though. Not bad. The New Teen Titans, number two. The first appearance of Deathstroke. Beautiful copy. Just a little thingamajig over here. I don't know what it is. A little something. <laughs> but the rest of the book is in really good shape. I was glad I was able to get this book. Like, it, um, like I've been saying, I'm trying to build my DC Keys... And this was another one that was on the hit list for the Comic-Con. And uh, I was very happy to have been able to get it. Omega Man number three. Omega Men, sorry. The Omega Men number three, the first appearance of Lobo, as you can see him right there on the cover. Once again, trying to build my DC keys. I saw this at a couple places uh, at the uh, Comic-Con. One guy was selling it for like over a hundred dollars, and I was saying to myself, "I don't think so. I don't think this book is worth anywhere near a hundred dollars." So when I found it at the, um, I bought a couple of books from the vendor. I don't know if one of them I already showed you. Yes, I bought this book from the same vendor I got this book from, and it was a it was a decent price. It was a really good price, and I didn't pay a whole lot for it. But uh, Lobo was another one on the hit list that I wanted to get, his first appearance, and uh, I was glad I was able to. Okay, so now we're getting to the nitty-gritty. we got some uh, heavy hitters coming up. Evil Ernie number one, the first appearance of Lady Death. Um, I've not only have been trying to build my DC keys, I've been trying to branch out there to other uh, publishing houses like... Um, Besides Image, like uh, Caliber and um, Comico and all that stuff. All the old ones that may not be around anymore. But some of the more independent uh, publishing houses and books. So yeah, I saw Evil Ernie. I talked the guy down. I got 20 bucks off. It's a 9.0. I was very happy to get this. Yeah, I gave it a 9.0. Um, first appearance of Lady Death. Um, yeah, I. this is one of the books that... I was really happy to get, um, trying to get quite a few uh, non-mainstream characters, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to get Batman characters, and I'm still trying to get a few Marvel characters and so forth. But, you know, outside the big three, outside uh, Marvel, DC, and Image, I'm trying to see what other, uh, you know, other companies have that I need. And Lady Death was one of them, and... Uh, so I got it. All right, now we're moving back to DC. <laughs> the Forever People number one. Yes, very good copy. I think it's a 7.0. Yeah, it's a really good copy. Um, I got this one from the same vendor, the very first vendor that was that I got the origins from. So, but this this was unfortunately this one wasn't fifty percent off. This is the one that was going on the wall, wasn't in the long boxes. But uh, many of you out there probably know this is the first full appearance of Dark Side. I think Dark Side originally appeared in uh, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen one thirty four, and I think you only saw his face on a uh, TV screen or a view screen or whatever. But this is where he makes his full appearance. And also, maybe some of you know that Dark Side was the precursor to Thanos. Um, I think the creator of Thanos, uh, was his name, Jim Starlin, even said that he modeled Thanos after Darkseid. 
This is a really hot book right now because there's talk that Darkseid's going to be in a future DC movie, I assume Superman. So I would recommend those of you out there. It's still a reasonably cheap book, but those of you that are looking for hot books to get, which ones to get and so forth, I would say this one. Try to get it as soon as you can. For a good price, of course. And try to get a decent grade. But yeah, this was, def this was on my hit list and I was really happy to have gotten it. Um, there were a lot of books I went in there. I came in with a list and I was very happy to have gotten most of the books on my list. With, you know, give or take, you know, maybe four or five I couldn't get or couldn't find or didn't want to spend the money on. But I was able to get quite a few. I went there with a mission and I pretty much accomplished it. All except for that damn Jason Todd mistake I made. The Saga of Swamp Thing number 37. This is the first appearance of Constantine. Another, I think he has a TV show starting up soon. This is another book I recommend uh, all of you out there to try to get while it's reasonably cheap. I mean, do I think that the book is going to go skyrocketing? Eh, probably not, you know, but it's probably going to have a little bit of a surge and go up in value. So those of you looking for some hot books, what hot books to purchase over the next few months, Give old Swamp Thing number 37 a try. It's really good shape, too. It's a, I think it's a 9.0. Okay, now we're getting down to my last three books. Now, this book was number one on my hit list, and I was so happy to have found it and, got it for, and, get, and get it for a decent price. Primer number two, the first appearance of Grendel. I went, um, I mean... When I first started out at the convention yesterday, I went all over looking for this, and no one had it. One guy had it, and he was selling it for, you know, 75 bucks, and it was beat up. I'm like, I'm not going to spend $75 on a piece of shit. So I kept looking around. No one had it. Then where I got, right across, actually, from the dealer right across from this guy here where I bought this, I saw this on the wall, and I just practically ran to the guy. Asked how much it was. I was okay with the price. Purchased it. And now have it. Yeah, this is, um, I was really glad to get this. I heard that they're trying to make a Grendel TV series or movie, but it just never really materialized. But, um, yeah, Grendel is another one of those books to get, um, characters to get, um, for those of you out there trying to get some independence, like Lady Death and and so forth. But this is a good book to get, and I'm very happy to have it in my collection. Last two. This one right here was actually the last book I bought yesterday. Batman, number 234, the first Silver Age appearance of Two-Face. I've always wondered, though, I, I guess I should do my research more, like, was Two-Face, like, you know, gone for a while? Like, you know, the, I've heard that, you know, there are books out there, Batman, I think 155 is the first Silver Age appearance of the Penguin, and 171 is the first appearance of the, the first Silver Age appearance of the Riddler, and oh, so forth and so on. Well, it's their first Silver Age appearance. Where were they? I mean, were they, like, gone for a while? I mean, were they gone for, like, over a decade? The, last, the latter part of the Golden Age, they weren't making appearances in comics? I don't know. I, I think the Joker wasn't, because I think the Comics Code was trying to cut down on violence in books after the EC f um, fiasco. But, yeah, this is it. Um, first Silver Age appearance. I don't even know if this is actually the Silver Age. I think this book was, what, 1971? Uh, wasn't that the, uh, the Bronze Age? But it's credited as the first Silver Age appearance of Two-Face, so... Who knows? Let's get to the book. Really good copy. 7.0. Paid a really good price. The guy had two copies. He had this one and one that was a little um, little cheaper. I sprung for this one. You know, hey. And I was very happy I did. You know, can't beat it. I got a good price and it was in really, really nice shape. And it's another one of those key Batman issues that, um, that I wanted to get. And the last book. I saved this one for last. I think, I don't know, maybe some of you might be disappointed that I saved this one for last, but for me, this means a lot to me. This was uh, something that I always wanted to get, and I was able to get it, and, and here it is. 
Vault of Horror number 16. The number is really insignificant. I like this one because I know some of the stories in this book. I knew of some of the stories in this book, some of my favorite stories, and that's why I wanted this one. But it's not a key issue. For me, it means a lot because this book is my very first Golden Age book. This, was the very, this is the only Golden Age book I have. And I love, those of you that saw one of my videos earlier, I love the EC books, the, the EC horror books. I'm not really into their sci-fi stuff or their crime stuff. But this was one of the books, um, Vault of Horror, that I wanted to get. I would like to get sometime in the near future One Tales from the Crypt and One Haunt of Fear. And I have the issues in mind that I want to get. Uh, nothing really standout-ish. Like, you know, I know the Haunt of Fear, there's one where... I forget the number, but it's there's a story in it called Horror Beneath the Streets, and it tells the origin of how the Crypt Keeper, the Vault Keeper, and the Old Witch came together to have their own comic. That's just too expensive, and that one doesn't really interest me. There's one that really interests me that has a really cool cover and really cool story. The same thing with Tales from the Crypt. There's one that I have my eye on. Both of them are not really key issues, but they mean something to me. Um, yeah, so this was my first uh, Golden Age book. This came out uh, December, it's a December, January 1950, 1951 issue. My oldest book in my collection was my Amazing Spider-Man number three, which is July 1963. So this one has it beat by 13 years. It's a very good, it's in really good shape. The spine's in pretty good shape. It's got some little tears and so forth, but the cover's on really well. It's not about to fall off. The pages are all attached. The centerfold's attached. It's complete. Um, the pages are cream, you know, as, as one would expect. But I saw this, and I didn't go to the Comic-Con to pick up an EC book, but I was looking through a few, and I saw some. I was like, oh, this is cool. Then I saw this one. I said, okay, I'm going to get this one. And it's one of those treats, like, you know, like a few months ago when I got Electra. I didn't go to the store to get the first appearance of Electra, but when I saw it and I bought it, I'm like, hey, you know, this is really cool, and I'm glad I did it, and this is definitely one of them. So that is my New York City Comic Con haul. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any comments, please post them or email me. Um... I know a lot of you are from California, so you probably get a chance to go to the number one Comic Con in the land, uh, the San Diego one, so that's really cool. But for us over here on the East Coast in the metropolitan area, the only one that we really have to look forward to is the New York, New York City one, which is the second biggest. It's a really good one. So I was able, I'm very happy I was able to go. I had a great time, and I love the books I was able to pick up. So to all of you, have a very good night. And I will talk to you soon.